Hi, I'm Michael Sabrin. I'm speaking to you in front of the Capitol here in Montpelier on a lovely October day during the election season. I'm coming in front of the Capitol because I don't want folks to think that just because I'm not an incumbent, that doesn't mean I'm new to the place. I've been following legislative issues here for probably a good decade, you know, mostly primarily on the uh, uh, mental health issue. You know, I, I know folks here, I know uh, legislators, I know uh, folks in the administration, I know folks that are, you know, heads of committees, I know folks in uh, different aspects of the government, I know agency heads, I know, uh, you know, folks in uh, Department of Forestry and fish and wildlife, whatnot. You know, I'm, I've been the president of Vermont Entomological Society for uh, quite a while, so I know, you know, folks throughout the, throughout the state in various capacities. Public service, most of my lifetime has been public service, whether it's been, you know, being a, a, a letter carrier, which I very much think is public service, to, uh, you know, being a, a postmaster, which is a real, a whole lot of public service, and then, you know, the last, the last six years or so, I have worked as a psychiatric resident representative for the for the uh, Vermont Psychiatric Survivors and Department of Mental Health, and that has me going into different facilities and various homes in the state, you know, to see how folks are doing and if there's anything that I can help them with as far as uh, needs and issues and, and whatnot. And because part of why I'm running is because of this uh, past legislative season and the passing of uh, Act uh, S-287, which became Act 192, and it's a uh, they call it a judicial process law, but it was really another involuntary medication law where they shortened things and sort of like uh, made a class out of class out of certain people and those kind of things. And as part of that process, you know, legislation passes for various reasons, good and bad, and those kind of things. But as part of the process that you know I was involved in, the main impetus or reason for the legislating legislation passing was is because something that the governor wanted. I myself don't personally care what the governor wants outside of it being good for what I would call my constituents. And in this, in this bill, I would certainly like to give the incumbent the benefit of the doubt that, you know, she was somewhat persuaded in voting for this legislation because it was uh, something the governor wanted, but uh, it wouldn't be how I would work. I kind of place myself in the political spectrum in the middle, you know, meaning, meaning that, you know, I'm somewhat of a a conservative liberal or a liberal conservative. You know, I think I have different fiscal views than most liberals do, that's for sure. One reason why I'm running as an independent is because, uh, you know, the parties are real entities and they have their own agendas. And their agendas aren't necessarily for your benefit, but for some, uh, you know, goal that they may have to pursue, you know, regardless of how it affects its constituents their constituents. Well, I think the mental health work is very important in the sense that it, you learn how to relate to people. Not only do you learn how to relate to people, but you learn how to get things done, who to talk to, you know, how to talk to people, you know, uh, where to go talk to people, you know. And I, and I think it also, I think it also, you develop an understanding for various ideas, you know, without being judgmental and even sometimes uh, even a, you know, a, an appreciation or compassion for different different viewpoints. You, know, you might you might have your own viewpoints, but you know in my work, uh, my work I'm not an advocate for myself. I'm an advocate for other people, so I have to set myself aside. And I think that would pretty much do the same thing if I was a legislator. It's like you know I'm not here for myself. You know I'm here for them or for you, and to do what can be done to you know make things better for folks. So like my opponent, I'm in favor of. Uh, universal health care in uh, single payer, but I don't feel they have to be synonymized with one. I don't think if you don't get one, you have to lose the other kind of thing. And also, I think I'm more open to uh, uh, various ways of paying for uh, universal health care, like uh, not just depending on uh, progressive income tax, which probably doesn't exist now or in the future. We don't have one now. I don't see where we're going to have one. The political will is not there. But there's, you know, you talk about having a pool of money, so my idea is literally to create a pool of money from various sources. You could still have, you know, some kind of income tax. We could keep the, we could keep the premiums. We could uh, have a sales tax dedicated to med 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 medical issues. We could even divert, you know, current taxes like the cigarette tax. And no, hasn't been said much during this election cycle, but, you know, I tend to be supportive of making marijuana legal because as a, as a state we can't afford 
not to. One, I think it's very wrong to be incarcerating people for uh, marijuana related issues and B, I think there's, you know, quite a bit of money there to be had as a state. I'm not for increasing the, the property tax, those type of things. I think that we need to create new income into the state. I think that we, you know, we need to bring back the capital gains tax that was dropped during the Douglas administration. I think we need to bring in money through marijuana legislation. I think we need to look at all avenues of bringing in, in uh, money. I don't think it can, you know, be you and I that are continue to pay what's happening in this state. Mm -hmm. I think we need to make Vermont health care as uh, affordable as possible. I mean, even now under the current system with the dropping of VHAP and count amount, we hear of uh, premiums being too high and folks not being able to bring their kids to uh, doctors and stuff like that because they can't afford it. I think, I think as a society, we really all need to buy into this universal health care and all have a similar, similar you know, experience when we, we, we seek mental health care. I think we should do everything we can mental health and physical health care. We should do everything possible to make it affordable for all the folks in this state. I don't think we should be concentrating on carve-outs, whether it be Medicare or, or Medicaid or, you know, I think universal health care is, you know, we're going to consider it in a literal sense. I think we should maybe, you know, think what that means before we start doing the carve-outs. One thing that separates me from my opponent is I am not supportive of the Vermont gas line in Champlain Valley. I think as a state we have made the decision to not support gas fracking and whether it's in state or out of state I think that you know I think as a, as a people we know that it causes uh, harm to people. I don't think that we should be supporting it. Not only that but I think we should be taking opportunities. I mean we talk about you know, in such and such a year, you know, being 90 percent uh, alternative fuels and stuff like that, and then we have a, something handed to us on the plate as far as getting us in that direction, and we just totally, you know, bypass or ignore that opportunity. Well, I think the current administration has been very tied to uh, special interest groups that tend to support those in power, and you know, I mean. The gas pipeline people might be one of those groups. Another one of those groups is the Vermont Hospital Association. I mean, they were a big, big thing behind the, the S-287 Act 192 passing. And that's also one reason why I'm not so sure of universal health care, really, or single payer, really, happening because, the, you know, the people that are supposed to benefit are you and I. The people that will likely benefit are, you know, the hospitals and the and the you know the insurance companies even when we have these things called you know universal uh, health care and single payer insurance will probably be the least person thought of and when these things come forward you know well if i become a representative for one thing you know i'm not there to do what the governor wants you know i'm not i'm not part of the administration i'm not part of the democratic party I'm not even part of the minority republican party i mean certainly i know how to work with people to you know maybe cut deals and stuff like that but is you know the governor says you know he wants something i'm going to say so what until you know i think it you know meets the needs of, needs of my constituents yeah. some of the things i support are you know continue to uh, support public funding for weatherization I support a person's right to consume raw milk. I support the state divesting from fossil fuel. I think that we should expand the whistleblower protection law to uh, 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 cover people that are temporary or part-time employees so that they can feel safe to report things without losing their their work or, or a source of income. Cap on the statewide education property tax because I think the taxpayers, you know, can't afford it. Like I said, we just need to look for new revenue systems. I very much support, you know, public transportation and light rail and uh, doing everything we can as a state to, uh, you know, uh, every, you know, on a, on a regular basis, you know, just keep on, you know, incrementally increasing our uh, devotion to those things. I mean, even, even it means, you know, diverting of funds from other transportation projects. I think that, uh, you know, if we're gonna divest from fossil fuels, we have to make things that, you know, go in that direction priorities versus, you know, continuing to, you know, act like we have on a regular basis and think somehow that, you know, just at the end of the road we're gonna be divested from fossil fuels. I also support the expanding sick leave and annual leave benefits. And on a national level I pose a national ID system, I think over here across the street where it's kind of, you know, getting towards that direction with uh, 
you know, needing a passport <laughs> and a social security card and a birth certificate just to renew our licenses, which, uh, you know, I guess it's a federal thing, but it's, you know, it's, uh, can be very onerous for folks and very expensive too. And, you know, low income people and people in, uh, you know, coming out of hospitals without IDs and all those kind of things, it's quite, it's quite a issue for them to uh, get a personal ID, which is, you know, pretty important to get housing and whatnot. But on, a, on the topic of housing, I think certainly the state needs to have more housing, more public housing, and probably needs to invest more in public housing, needs more vouchers for, uh, you know, getting people off the streets, you know, and uh, also even on a local local level, I know this isn't very popular, but, uh, you know, Montpelier needs a homeless shelter, you know. And even and even uh, Washington County, uh, District uh, 6 needs a homeless shelter. I mean, I'd certainly be supportive of somebody getting something you know, a homeless shelter going in my district, that would be very important, I think.